Hi guys, this is the Wiz Kid, and welcome back to the Wiz Block. This is our third tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the TCP IP model. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and the IP stands for Internet Protocol. Now let's start off with a definition. What is this TCP IP model? Well, it's a set of rules or protocols that performs the transfer of data between computers. Now the TCP and the TCP IP, it's responsible for verifying that the correct data is delivered from the client to the server. An example of this would be your postal service like UPS or FedEx. They're responsible for delivering the right package from source to destination. The IP, Internet Protocol, this is responsible for moving packets of data from node to node. Now, there are this TCP IP model, it's a four tiered model. It's kind of similar to the OSI reference model that we did earlier in an earlier tutorial. Uh, the application layer will be similar to these three layers in the OSI model. The transport layer will, it's similar, transport layer is similar. Network layer in the OSI is equivalent to the internet layer in the TCP IP. Data link is similar to network interface. Alright, now what the application layer does in the TCP IP is that it allows for user functions like file transfer and email. The transport layer, it establishes a session between the two machines and it breaks down session data to transfer to the next layer. The internet layer is concerned with routing of packets over the network and in this case the network will be the internet uh, the network layer now this ensures that the data sent is accurate and it provides guidelines for transmission of bits or between two modems some protocols that operate at each layer for the application layer, we have protocols like FTP or File Transfer Protocol. We have the FTP. We have RIP or Routing Information Protocol. We have DNS or Domain Name System. In the transport layer, we have two protocols in this layer. The TCP, as we already know, which is Transmission Control Protocol, and we have the UDP, or User Datagram Protocol. I'll explain this further. The Internet layer, the only protocol that can operate at this layer is the IP, or Internet Protocol. At the network interface layer, we have what is known as the IEEE A202 standard. Now you'll probably see, oops, I'm very bad at this mouse thing, A202.x. Now the X could represent any number. For example, it could be, the standard could be 802.11 or 802.11b, 802.11g, these are standards that uh, wireless, that, that your wireless devices use. So when you set up your Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi use, I think, 802.11b and g. Uh, now before devices can communicate they have to 
go through what is known as a three-way handshake. Now, what this really means is, let's pop up a picture. Now, in the three-way handshake, So in the three-way handshake, let's call this device A. So device A first needs to send a sync bit or synchronization bit to tell machine B or destination that, hey, I'm ready to transmit some data. Are you ready? Then machine B will send back machine A's synchronization bit along with an acknowledgement bit saying that, okay, I've gotten your sync bit and I'm ready to receive your data then machine a would send back machine b's acknowledgement bit along with the data so that's really how the three-way handshake is done and this has to be done before uh terminals on a network can communicate with each other now earlier i mentioned the TCP UDP that operates at the transport layer. Uh, these protocols are what we refer to as connectionless and connection oriented protocol. Uh, now the TCP is connection oriented. this is an example of UDP but the TCP is connection oriented what this means is that when data is sent let's say machine A sends is using TC this this network they're using TCP to communicate now machine A sends data to machine B now if they say they're sending 10 bits of data Or five bits of data, right? Machine A, machine B. Now, when machine A sends the first data, machine machine A asks machine B if it gets the data. If machine B gets the data, then machine B sends a response to machine A and said, "Okay, I've gotten data one. You can go ahead and send the rest." Then machine A would send data two. And machine B, upon receipt, send back a request saying that okay, I've got data too, etc. etc. Now, this does not happen in UDP, as you can see with this little picture right here. When machine A sends a data, there's no acknowledgement from machine B. So, you see right here, it says. Are you getting all of this? Machine B is like, who cares? Send it faster. You know? So that's that is why user datagram protocol or UDP is referred to as connection less protocol. And it's much more unreliable um, for obvious reasons. Right? Because there's really no checks and balance to this type of protocol. With, with the TCP, if the data is coming in too fast, then the recipient can send a signal to the sender telling that he need to telling him that he needs to slow down or resend whatever bit it did not get, whatever data it did not receive. And that's really TCP IP model in a nutshell. Uh, next, we'll move on. On our next tutorial, we'll go on to the transmission medium. Alright, thanks for watching.